are back inside City Hall when John McCain announced he's suspending his campaign to focus on the economic crisis. It threw the political world into a tailspin. But now that tonight's presidential debate is back on at 9 p.m., what can we expect to see and which candidate has more at stake tonight? Joining us to discuss those issues and much more are the four members of our Friday Reporters Roundtable, Tom Robbins of The Village Voice, Daily News columnist and host of The Morning Show on WWRL Radio, Errol Lewis, New York One's own political director, Bob Hart, and Daily News Albany Bureau Chief Ken Lovett, who joins us from Albany tonight. Welcome all. Let's get right to it. I guess I start with you, Mr. Lewis. Assess the last 48 hours here. Oh, uh, uh, high drama, uh, a lot of cynicism, a lot of charges and counter charges. John McCain uh, has made clear that uh, he's going to throw the game changers in. He's going to throw the Hail Mary pass as many times as he needs to. Uh, you know, first to Sarah Palin. Uh, just more recently by sus saying he was going to suspend his campaign and kind of not suspending it, kind of arranging what in retrospect now looks like a, a white knight scenario where he would ride into Washington, bless a deal that was already 90 percent done and look like a hero. It didn't quite work out that way, but he's going to still try and play it. Uh, it's very interesting. I think we're going to continue to see these kind of gambits from him. I think he knows that the numbers have been working against him this week. It's uh, amazing in state after state. Um, I mean, there are a number of swing states that have gone decisively for Obama. You know, I mean, a, a Detroit free press poll, double digit leads in Michigan for for Obama, uh, close to double digit leads in some polls in Colorado. Uh, he needed to do something to stop the momentum, uh, get the debate back on his terms. That's uh, effectively what he has done. Tom Robbins. You know, it's been like two alternate universes. That's the way I felt. I mean, on the one hand, we had this incredibly serious economic crisis going. I mean, the stock market crater, forget the stock market, the bond market, according to my friends who follow these things, has done even worse. I mean, we really have been looking at an incredible fiscal chasm all week long. And at the same time, we have had this incredible play acting on the political part. I don't think there's any other way to describe what we've seen uh, yesterday in Washington, John McCain's plan. I don't know if... Barack Obama comes off a whole lot better because he certainly was not decisive in the things that he recommended be done here. But two worlds, two different worlds, the one that the public lives in and the one that the po politics lives in. <laughs> Perhaps, Bob Hart, that's a good way to describe it there. Well, there's an expression, uh, I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. Well, John McCain managed to do both within 48 hours. That's possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he basically said, I'm not debating until there's a deal. There's still no deal. There's still no deal tonight. And guess what? He is debating. What happened was a, a, it was a, a political ploy that just didn't work. It blew up in his face, and he realized he can't go into this weekend with this being the story. The deal didn't get made. The, you know, even though, as Errol said, it was 90 percent there, uh, Boehner, uh, the, the, one of the head Republicans, blew it up. So what's he going to do? He's going to debate tonight and hopefully change their narrative because th this is the two worst days of the campaign so far for John McCain. Well, Ken, we, we did see where Senator McCain pledged not to be there tonight, and yet he is in Mississippi. What's going on here? I think it was, uh, you know, a nice game of poker, and, uh, and McCain bluffed, and uh, he lost. I think, look, for John McCain, the economy is a big Achilles heel. You know, he has said, it's not my bag, you know, it's not my forte. And here he was, you know, the biggest economic crisis. He wanted to look decisive. He wanted to look, as they said, as the white knight. And he thought maybe he can come into the debate, and that would be his rallying cry, that I got it done, I got it as a, you know, bipartisan agreement, and, and I can handle the economy. Just didn't work out that way for him. Well, I, I'll stay with you, Ken. Who has the most to gain and the most to lose tonight? Well, I mean, theoretically, it's a debate on the uh, foreign policy, and, and you would think that this is where Obama really has to win over a lot of people. However, you know the economy is going to be hanging over this. It's going to be uh, interesting to see whether Brian Lair there, uh, you know, how, how much he pursues it, but obviously, uh, you know, the economy and what's happening uh, uh, affects foreign policy. So I, I think McCain is going to have to come off strong. I don't think um, it's going to be all about terrorism and national security. Um, had it been that way, I think it was Obama's real, you know, Obama really had to fight. Uh, now I think it's going to be a little more even footing. And Jim Lair will be the moderator tonight. Oh, Jim. But, right, we love Brian we love Lair Brian, yeah. on the radio, but this case is Jim Lair. And so I turn to you, Tom, in terms of the same question. 
Who has the most riding tonight on the table? Who has the most to gain? Who has the most to lose? I think it's shifted over the last 24 hours. Really? I, well, I, I think that it was Barack, uh, Barack Obama who had the most to lose and needed to gain the most by, as Ken just said, proving himself on, on foreign policy. But I think it's completely changed because I think, as, as Bob was just saying, John McCain has got to dig himself out of a deep hole tonight. We learned a great deal out of him, about him, in the last few hours. It was that this guy is not just a gambler, he's a compulsive gambler. <laughs> the, the two things that he's done so far that have, as, as Errol says, changed the game have been these Hail Mary passes, Sarah Palin, and now this suspend the campaign, I'm going to Washington thing. Both have so far been disasters. Sarah Palin is in, is in New York all this week. She hasn't been able to give a comprehensive interview. She has incoherent when she goes off message and doesn't speak about what, what she really doesn't know about. Uh, I think it's really John McCain who's got a lot to uh, prove tonight at this debate. I, you know, I, th I think McCain is fighting a, a tactical fight, and this is where he gets into trouble, that he's not really looking beyond the two or three days, the next couple of news cycles, you know, and uh, for, for, for if, if you confine it to 72 hours, it, it actually is kind of an interesting and intriguing, dramatic kind of an effort that, you know, may, maybe it didn't work out, but it was, it was kind of an interesting plan that he had uh, to try to uh, shore up his credentials, stop Obama's momentum this week, and, and get through the weekend. Um, Obama, on the other hand, I think has a, a, a more long-term uh, approach and a more long-term problem. What I expect to see him try to do today, uh, tonight, is, uh, is what his main task is, which is to cross a certain threshold of acceptability, respectability. There's still a lot of people who don't know him. There's still a lot of undecided voters. There are a lot of uh, working class voters in uh, Ohio and Michigan and Pennsylvania uh, who, who, aren't necess who don't necessarily think that he's the guy to help them get back to work. I mean, what he does doesn't look like work to them. You know, he's been a community organizer. He's been a politician. He's been a, a, a professor, a, sort of a professor. You know, uh, so, so he's, he's got to make those folks comfortable. It's not just about race. It's about his profession. It's about his, uh, his outlook. It's about the way he talks. It's about the, his lifestyle, his personal story. It doesn't really connect with a lot of people. He's got to try to make that connection tonight. And uh, if he can make that connection, or so his strategists have told me, they think it'll be a situation like with Ronald Reagan, where in 1980 he was seen as kind of beyond the pale, you know, an actor. We don't know this guy. He's a right-wing kook at a time that the nation was, was considered more to the left. And uh, after he crossed a certain threshold around October of 1980, he comes roaring from behind, closes a 20-point deficit, and unseats uh, the president of the United States. Okay, great orator in terms of when he's giving a speech. Um, but the question here, Bob Hart, does the debate, the, the, does the format of a debate, given their two histories, does it naturally favor John McCain? I don't think it naturally favors either from watching all the, the million, not millions, mm. dozens of debates that we watched earlier this year. Neither really impressed me. There's almost a sense of deja vu here for Barack Obama. Several times he had Hillary Clinton on the ropes. They were heading into a debate and he could have finished her off and he didn't. And tonight, I, I kind of feel like he's almost in a similar situation. If he can really explain to Americans out there, what did John McCain fail to do over the last two days mm. with, with this economic summit in Washington, he could finish him. I don't think that's going to happen tonight. Um, I think this is going to be John McCain's chance to get back in, get things almost even or even, uh, you know, you know with, with a few good quips here and there. Do you think there might be any got you moments for either candidate where they might be on the ropes and in trouble? Well, one of the things anybody could say to John McCain is, what are you doing here? There's no signed deal. You said you weren't coming down until there was a signed deal. They're still working on it. They're going to work through the weekend. That's one easy question to ask him. Yeah, I, think, I think there'll be others. Both candidates are vulnerable when you look at who their aides are, where they've gotten their contributions from, who their advisors are. It's not, it's not a pretty scene. And uh, if there is a, a line of question and it gets to that populist reality, the reality that a lot of people outside of Washington hate the idea of a deal, hate this deal in particular, don't know why they're supposed to go into debt uh, and, and feel suspicious about these folks in Washington who they often think are playing games with the American people. And then you find out, you, you, know, well, you know, and then you find out that millions and millions and millions of dollars in contributions and private jets and connections and favors and housing deals and all kinds of things have been going on. Uh, I, don't, I don't think, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a gotcha, but 
um, that reality, I think, could really chill the debate and stop either of them from uh, scoring points on how they would resolve the economic crisis. Before we take this break, Bob Hart, do you think that still it's going to focus 90% on foreign policy? No. Or no. will it be perhaps half economy, if not more? You and I have been behind the scenes planning debates, and oh. we're supposed to go oh. certain, certain ways, and we've been able to <laughs> detour it. I think that's what's going to happen tonight. I mean, obviously, they're going to be talking about foreign policy, but there's going to be so much focus. Uh, Lair uh, knows this, that there has to be a lot of focus tonight on the economy, and I think that's where it's going to lie. You just gave me a flashback in terms of what goes on behind the scenes of a debate. Right. Mm -hmm. So imagine now, go from a mayoral debate to a presidential debate, so you times that times a thousand. I, I can't even imagine that. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll pass on that one. <laughs> it is now time for a break, but we will continue this discussion. Coming up next, former President Bill Clinton has some nice things to say about Mayor Bloomberg. We will see what our reporters think about those remarks in just a moment. Stay with us.